December 19th select board meeting to order. And that means I have to say record to the calendar. recording in progress. In progress. Okay. Um, do we have any changes or additions to the agenda? Apparently, need to sign a burn grant. Letter support. Letter support. Okay. That's his thing. Okay. Um. Let me see. Do I have any public comment? Can we do a few have there? a introduction up there to let people chime in with their name and where they're from and stuff. Right. Who's there? Okay. We'll start with Cass. She's there. Hi guys. Hello. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Matt. Yeah. So you're not muted. There we go. Can't hear you. Good way to test audio. It is right. Now it shows that you're muted. Now it shows you're not muted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, there's a there's a mumble. Oh. 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 Okay. There you go. How's that, Matt? Oh, I can hear you. Ah, okay. We can sort of hear you now. Okay. You're down a long dark tunnel. All right. Oh, that's perfect. Gotcha. Okay. And Brett, we see you up there. I want to yes, see that. Right. Okay. And then there's guys with Green Mountain. Okay. We know um as I was saying, if you didn't hear Matt, well Matt's out working um tonight. A lot of people have still got a lot of water in the with. We were um, Hyde Park. Hyde Park did pretty well. We are not engaging FEMA. Yeah, we definitely we're not. <laughs> no need. We've been <clears throat> the places that usually have trouble. The other part on Brook Road again. Um. Okay. Let's see. The budget, the highway budget review with Mark. Mark is, uh, I talked with him earlier today. He was, uh, he said these these Monday stores that are doing everybody in because they're being so long. You gotta be finding it too low with work. It just, you know, the work just isn't stopping. It's just ongoing. So um, <clears throat> I talked to him about three o'clock this afternoon and he said he was going home and going to bed. And I said, that's probably not a bad thing. Okay. That's expense budget number one. Um, I'm going to email it to Chastity. Okay. So in there's the highway budget. And okay. You can do whatever you want with that tonight. Yeah. I can go through it. Or well, let's Mark has the biggest impact, so it's almost like if you can solve the highway hurdle, the rest of it's easy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we can walk through it. Let me just get this out to. Um, okay. Yeah. So you're, you're emailing. You're emailing it to me, Ron. Is that what you said? Yes. Okay, cool. <clears throat> Let's see if there are just a few sort of simpler things that we can clear here before we wing it off into, into how to solve the town highway if that works for everybody. <laughs> Get the, get the easy things done so that they get done. Um, the uh, the uh, changes in the uh, in the Hyde Park Town Fire Department bylaw changes. Not 
They were all. Well, I guess I think did anybody have any questions about them? They were all. It wasn't anything that was gigantic. It was really just cleaning it up. So if everybody's okay with it, just a motion to uh, to accept them. <coughs> I make a motion to accept the Hyde Town current permit um, by law changes. Second. Okay. Did you get those last time, Chas? Yes. Okay. Um, anybody have any questions or any additional comments? Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Uh, our new town administrator update. As you can see, Brent is online. They've got back a uh, our, uh, signed letter of employment. And um, maybe he'll bring up nicer weather with him. Jeez. So, help. Um, well, welcome, Brent. He's like, we certainly haven't had very pleasant weather anytime, so someday we'll have better weather. Of course, I haven't been, I haven't been watching nationally to see how the weather is on the panhandle of Texas, which frequently is not the nicest weather in the South either. <laughs> Do you guys talk about a start date just for information? <laughs> I don't know for the record yet. Or uh, no, no, and just sort of the end of January when he's handing in his notice and then depending on what time takes to move. So it's in his letter. I, I think, yeah, in the yeah. letter. We Unless he changed it. By, no, by <laughs> it February 5th or before. Okay. And if something happens, if we need to, if we need to change it, we can always change it. Jennifer's here in the online portal. Oh, good. Okay. Um, Jennifer, the child care contribution policy. You want to, you want to explain, I mean, I have your memo. Um, pretty straightforward. I guess it, it's, um, Obviously, the choice we as a select board have to make is do we um, <clears throat> we want to withhold a maximum from from employees a lower amount or not? Mm -hmm. I think we have. If the uh, if the town absorbs it all, it's ten four five six about sixty five hundred. Uh, no, that was different. That was the different formulas depending on what you what you do. Right. But um, the the gross which the state okay. wants is for a little under four thousand. Yeah, from Hyde Park, one way or the other. Right. Either so if the town pays it all, I got you I'm back on. Yeah, it'll be split three thousand, one thousand, because you you can do a forty four for the town point forty four, or you can do a thirty three and an eleven and split it that way with employees. Council actually, or the mayor actually has to sign the resolution 
That's it, I think. Because the rest of it's just like they approve it or not, but it's yes. not an actual. Yeah, the TIB, the, the bid tabulation thing doesn't have required mayor signature. No, just for council approval to approve the bid. Of like, and then we'll just do send them the minutes, probably. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. There, there we go. We got it. Okay. I can't hear anything. Are you guys talking? Is that better? Yes, I don't. Okay, yep. There we go. Yeah. Okay. okay, now we're not muted. <clears throat> um, she asked the people what, what we're trying to do is, is with the legislation that passed related to child care and early childhood education. Um, and it, it's an investment in child in the child care system and the and changes. Uh, so that there's a child care contribution tax starting the 1st of July of 24. Um, and, and the choice that, uh, well, and that it's not to town, the choice that employers <laughs> will uh, have to make is you can, um, you can withhold up to, uh, could you hold up to 25, 25 or, or 11 or four hold up to 25 percent or 11 percent before the help with the cost of the tax yeah so yeah. the okay. maximum you yeah. can charge employees is 0. 0.11 yeah or zero those are your two choices that i understand it's 21 no 0. 0.1 0. 0.11 0.10 the state wants 0. 0.44. The max you can shift over to employee deduction is 0. 0.11. So the town taxpayers would pay 0. 0.33, which, you know, when you talk about $4,000 total is shifting $1,000 to all your employees. You know, they spread it out every paycheck. Right. So. I think that's the fairest. That's, not an, annual, that's an annual basis, too. It's the fourth. It's not. It's, and then it's just supposed to go to the state. And then they're going to yeah. resend it to child care right. facilities or subsidies to parents. Take care of my kids. Or subsidies, right. Mm -hmm. So they took care of my kids. Yeah, it's a mandate. You don't have you don't only you only have a choice on whether to pay the 44 or 33 for your taxpayer. That's the choice you have. You don't have a choice to pay it or not, because it's a, a mandate. You gotta pay it, Roland. All of so. If you decide not to pay the 0.44 and shift 0.11 to the employees, then you can do that. It'll 
probably come up in union negotiations because it's already been raised in other institutions because that's a negotiating type thing apparently under right. collaborative you know, <laughs> bargaining so but anyway it's a, it's a small dollar amount but it is a new dollar that can change every year going forward because it's legislatively mandated on you as the employer all employers so more of the scientists down there yeah. Well, the uh, yeah, because it it isn't a um, there's sort of an issue. It isn't a great deal of money, but yeah, this year, this you know, well, well but there is it'll it'll be a fight. All, well, and and we can change. We just because we do it one year doesn't mean we have to do the same thing every year. You know, you do this as a year by year. If if we pay it all that becomes a benefit that we're offering folks that work for the town of Hyde Park. That's a good point to look at, a good way to look at. You know, and, and again, depending on, you know, on the income of the folks that are working for you, that's a, you know, that makes a difference, you know, for a lot of folks today, every, every, every dollar that they, that they're, they're taking home is an important dollar to take home. Um, where the uh, again, where it's sort of whether it's whether the town's going to pay three thousand or four thousand, you know, because we're going to pay three thousand anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's just are we are we going to for this first time around? We'll charge three thousand dollars to pull the rail trip. Is is a, is a benefit. <laughs> We're done with that. Yeah. <laughs> a couple of years ago, that would have been true. <laughs> so I chas, what are you what are you thinking about this? Well, I don't want to give them a more and a half. I don't think the other taxpayers want them either. Well, I'll disagree with that statement. I don't think that's right, because I don't think this would have passed if there were weren't a lot of people that aren't supportive of it. Well, being a mandate, we don't have a choice. Well, the the choice is whether we pay three thousand and shift um, point one one back on employees or got it, we got it, got it, got it. Pay it all. Well, no sense of throwing it back onto the employees because, just as Ron said, in union negotiating, that's going to come back. Well, right, it's going to come back, and then <laughs> and then you wouldn't you wouldn't want to make a few people pay it and the union people not pay it. Yeah. Uh -huh. and, well, and it, how many people does this really affect? So, yeah, it's 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 on everybody. Wait, even if you don't have children? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's dumb. Well, that's what I was saying. I'm reading it now. Yeah. Uh, well, okay, but I guess I misunderstood. We pay school taxes. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's the same thing. It's it's society as a whole trying to. Ah, uh, got it, got it, got it, got it. It's right. going into a bucket. I see, I see, I see. Yeah. Oh, it's an income tax. Oh well, yeah. Bucket, they'll never come back. <laughs> It'll come back, <laughs> but who knows how? Right. <laughs> the next year will be two thousand dollars more. <laughs> I think uh, a small recast of people that were late. There's well, this is this is the new state law. Okay. 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 That that deals with um related to child care and early childhood education. Okay. And so starting July 1st of the uh, 24, yeah. all right, employers, period. And we're just happy because we're the employers, okay. Um have to pay. Uh, there's basically a tax you have to pay, and then and it's based on what your total payroll is. Point one one percent. Right. And no, it's forty four percent. If we want right, to, if we push it off. There's no sense of pushing it off to the employees. It's no. not back in it. Yeah, right. Right. So well, right, and so everybody, which is you know, for us, it's this little amount of money. But you think of a think of Copley Hospital, think of the Mountain Company. I, you know, this is a, uh, you know, and so it, it's what it's doing is asking a little, it's that theory you ask a little bit of money from everybody and then 
nobody's going to scream too much, which I don't have never found to be the truth, but <laughs> it's a good theory. So yeah, so I, I I think, and again, we can we can change it if it gets really, or you know, we can change it next year. But I think you're right. It sounds like Rolly, you're right for this first year. Let's have the town pay the full amount. I agree. That's where I am. Okay. So moved. Second. Okay. You there, Chas? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. <laughs> Thanks for the memo, Jen. That's really helpful. I'm going to take it with me so that I can just hand it to people to explain it to them. <laughs> Because it'd be everything on the, you know, what's new and what everybody needs to know. All the information you put with it is really, is uh, very helpful. Thank you. Okay, there we go. Okay, well, let <clears throat> town warrants child care. Okay. Um, the drone policy. We put it off last time because I didn't know if people have looked at it or. Um... You must have gotten a copy of that too, Chas. Yes. We had. Um, Basically, the town lawyer drafted it up, right, Ron? It's been a while since I looked at that, actually. Okay. That is, oh, it was a, a template from BLCT. Too. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this is, if we're going to use it, now we use it indirectly now through consultants, uh, Watershed Consulting, VTrans even has one, their bridge team, you know, so they don't have to climb under bridges. A lot of bridge consultants that you might hire will do it. And it's really just trying to address the fact that the town is engaging in this, you know, privacy kind of controls. Once drones get up in the air, they're actually not regulated by the town. They're regulated by FAA. Mm -hmm. So as long as you have a licensed pilot and follow those rules, and sometimes you have an exemption if the drone isn't big, you get recreational drones. But a lot of the drones that we use are commercial drones with licensed pilot following FAA rules. So it is already regulated. This just gets into the uh, insurance issues, which BLCT has said, if you're going to engage in this type of equipment, which is a little unusual uh, because it flies over private property legally, then the town should have a, a policy to address that issue and how it's used and the insurance carriers notified, the town attorney's aware. And if there's an issue um, with the public concern, you handle the policy and that should stabilize things a little bit. So because you, because you've thought of it and you've had these things in place. Right. How you can use it, how you report it, all that kind of stuff. So I don't know if you have any questions, but I don't think we'll own a drone. This is more than, this is the most of the use of a drone. Through a contractor. We'll have Allie looking for lost dogs. <laughs> you know, that would be all she is. Yeah. <laughs> there are a couple uh, operators in Hyde Park that yeah. we've used before on uh, experimental type things, and they come in very handy. Uh, we just finished one with Watershed on a debris field assessment up on Diggins Road, which would have been a very time consuming for a survey team. The drone came in through its Flew its pattern for about 20 minutes, capturing the elevations. So you don't have to, you know, you did, we did from, uh, if you're going up Diggins Road, um, there's the first barn on the left as you go, before you start to go up the really steep hill, that whole area is the debris field. And they were able to survey probably six acres in that's half, the, half an hour. One, that's the end of the class three road right there. Yeah, right there, the transition. So anyway, that's that's how it's being used, and we don't collect the data the consultants would. Like I said, we don't have elevations too. Oh yeah, right down to like less than a foot. Really? Hmm. Cool. So surveyors, and Matt Matt might be online, but surveyors. I what state's going to charge us for that one? 
Well, surveyors are going to benefit because they can capture a lot of data very quickly compared to, um, and I don't, I don't, and anyways, a lot of technology happening. So yeah, it, yeah, it usually of, saves costs in the end. You know, even though you might have different things you have to do to get them here, yeah, the overall cost is usually reduced with the newer they're tech. Not very much. No, but the, you know, the, the the process to do it is still a cost, right. but the cost to do it another way is higher cost. So. Anyway, try and take advantage of that and have a policy that deals with it. And and this is, a again, a template that the League of Cities and Towns is saying to go with. So I think it probably makes sense to have the policy <laughs> yeah, because right. because you can sort of bet if you don't, <laughs> you know, <laughs> then something's going to happen and it's going to be you didn't have a policy. So here comes the lawsuit, right? right. So I guess we need a motion to uh, to accept the drone use policy for the town of Hyde Park. So I'll second it. Okay. Um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody? Aye. Anybody abstaining? You can stop in and sign sign sometime if you want. You know, so that we have it here for. There we go. If we're all signing, we might as well get you to sign it too. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Website accessibility discussion. Hi, this is Elisa. She's on the webmaster. Ah. Oh, yeah. Okay, there you are. <laughs> Sorry, I can't get anything else to work, but can you hear me? Oh, yeah. No, can hear you fine. Can you hear us? Yes. <clears throat> so, so Ron and I had talked about this a long time ago, and I just now found a really good solution for it. Um, at one point, we had an intern who tried to help us, and we kind of have been limping along um, with ADA um, rules and accessibility. But the problem with what we have been doing is that anytime you add or change your website, um, you're, you're kind of suddenly out of compliance again. <laughs> and so it's, it's hard to keep up with it. And um, the solution is the software that scans the site every day and um, makes it accessible constantly. So um, I, I sent a paper, did you guys get that? A yeah. one page, yeah, a one I, page. I do. I remember seeing it. Okay, so this isn't this isn't like your your yearly expenses that you usually pay. This is something new, but um, I don't see as if you really have a choice. <laughs> I mean, you, you really need to be ADA compliant, and um, there's kind of hardly any other way to do it directly. Right. <laughs> yeah. And we've been trying. I mean, we've been semi-compliant and I don't think anybody is going to, you know, you know, if you don't have the money for it, you could budget for it next year or something like that. But I can't remember. What's what's the cost? Um, well, there's there's a tax deduction. So um, because there's a there's an ADA compliance tax deduction. So if you look at it that way, it's three hundred and seventy dollars a year. That's after you get the tax deduction. But I don't know about municipalities and taxes, so I'm, I'd assume. <laughs> I don't get double. tax deduction, right? <laughs> Not an issue. Um, if not, I think it's four seventy or something yeah. like that. It, it's on the paper there. No, so, sometimes they'll have a government rate too. We could check into that. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't think so. That's so. It, if you want to do it, just say yes, Elisa, and Elisa will do it for you. Um, or you can plan for it. That's fine too. But I did find a solution finally. <laughs> and um, yeah. Any questions? What's the? Um, it sounds like it's a uh, self monitoring system so staff isn't really involved with it you just load it up and then then what do you have to do yeah. with that? 
there is no work involved after I install it. Um, it's it's a JavaScript, um, and it's it's actually artificial intelligence. Uh -oh. um, <laughs> but what it does is it scans the site every day. And if you look at 3wpromotions.com, I've got it on mine. There's a little um, icon at the bottom right of, of my website, and um, you can see it in action. But basically, it changes colors for colorblind. It like it does it does all the accessibility things that you want it to do. Um, it makes text bigger if you need it bigger. Um, it reads with um, readers for for the blind, um, and because like so when you add things to your site every day or whenever you do, um, it's automatically part of um so it it it's just works really well i don't see any reason to wait which is no no i don't I, that's, I actually that's really cool <laughs> yeah yeah it is really cool it's one of you know ai's good things <laughs> yeah yeah there are... <laughs> so be clear, this, something like this is is uh there's got to be really helpful yeah so um could um, you do a pass through invoice on that like yeah, yeah, the invoice would come from 3W Promotions with all your web stuff. Okay. Uh, uh, and it would be once a year. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Any questions? No objection. Yeah, no, no. Okay. All right, so just let me know if you want me to install it. I think, what do we think? Go ahead and do it. Yeah. Sounds like it. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's an appropriation, so you might want to vote on it. That that may be one of the least expensive things we can do to make ourselves handicapped accessible. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll make I'll make the motion to approve it. And I will probably be the second, right? <laughs> yeah, you probably are. Really. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All like, full of it tonight. I don't know. He is. Anyways, I went home and took a nap or something. I don't know what's in that water bottle. <laughs> I'm gonna keep drinking it too. Oh my god. Um, all, all, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Okay, I'll install it and I'll talk to Jennifer about um, making sure she files for the tax um, rebate or whatever you call it, deduction. All right, thank you. Okay, let's, um, since we have the crew waiting here, Moyle Kennel lease update. Come on up here. Yeah, everybody come on up here. I gotta say, what's your website for? It's lovely. It's like really easy to find your meeting. Yeah, it's super easy compared to. Yeah, it was impressive. Okay, so. I'm Betsy. Tracy. I'm the one that's wild house. Stinson. From the other side. Hey, man, it's all yours. So we had our meeting last night. You asked me, you were like, you met me last night at the meeting. I was like, no. Absolutely wasn't there. I did. Yeah, wasn't that you just texted me like two, three hours ago? Yeah, about the meeting with Matt. Mm -hmm. At the that's what I meant to send you. Oh yeah. Oh, no. I was like, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> <God, I'm laughs> what did I write? <laughs> uh oh. Okay. I don't know. She confused the crap on me before too. So <laughs> me. Her. Right. All right. Like, that's fair. <laughs> so we had a couple towns. Um, it's like board member from Wolka. We had um Cambridge town administrator there, uh, Johnson's ACO, Jamie from NCAL, uh, Cambridge, Jamie said Cambridge town administrator, um, assistant town clerk of Eden. Uh, and so got some feedback. It sounds like some towns are interested, um, but they want a lot, like not so many what ifs um, questions. Okay. Sure. Um, same. <laughs> <laughs> so we there was some discussion about like leasing, how long can we lease for? Um, and then there was it seems like everybody really wants to do the lease fee, and then Hyde Park would basically be the lease ease 
and then we would break up the cost between everybody else. So let's just say it costs twenty five thousand, and we got five towns. We'd all pay five thousand dollars. Then it comes into what about um, taking care of the dogs? So I, the example is Cambridge. You're going to come multiple times a day and let the dogs out. I mean that's the right thing to do, but that's a long drive from there to there back again. Um, and we don't want you guys to be stuck doing it just randomly because nobody let the dog out. Um, so there was some thoughts about maybe just adding into the lease or saying something, you take care of the dog. Then there's no cross-contamination. Nobody's just yeah. walking through. And so we have to come up with a price for that. Yeah. Um, and Cal came and they talked about their policy on taking dogs. Um, they would do a test. So if we took a dog in, they would do a temp test immediately. And then if it passes, they would take the dog and, but they do a five day hold. And we in our town ordinance have a seven day hold. So Other towns have 10, yes. some have five. I think very. So um, she was like, well, you could hold them for two days and then we could do and, um, but then other towns are looking in taking it to Ch taking the dogs to Chittenden County where they just charge you a fee and they'll take any dog. No, 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 no test, just take the dog. Yeah. Um, so that seems what we should be doing, maybe. Um, I, Matt is going to do a drawing. We want to do a drawing of what just to get it. Yeah, people haven't been there, so just yeah, be yeah. like, here's what it looks like. Is he like an architect? Or something. I'm like, because I could draw. Uh, but, like, are you looking for measurements? Yeah, that's, like, yeah. Matt's online. Okay. That draw. makes more sense. He can, he can, he can answer. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I just was like, I'm drawing, but yeah. that makes more sense. He's the one to think that. He's really a lot more sense. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah. thanks. So, filling in the lines. So, let me let me back up. So if and we'll just say if we got five towns. So you're you're thinking of uh of twenty five thousand a year for the lease. For the lease, okay. But then when um when we bring a dog in, there's a daily fee for. Uh, that was brought up last night too. Is that one? One of the suggestions was that the town make them come here and do the fee. And so the town gets the fee that, no? She's not, I think she's talking about what their fee is. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to figure out. We I'm, just, I'm saying, okay. We haven't discussed that yet with you okay. guys, with okay. Savannah at all. Okay. That was something that like, I think I told okay. Alan, I was yeah. like, hey, wait, would it make more sense yeah. if we just took care of the dogs instead of having dog officers? And we'd like kind of Five briefly percent. mention it, but I don't think we've talked about what that would look like. Right, um, but, but but then yes. I'm, I'm just trying to figure out, so if, if and again, it depends on how many other towns we get to, because mm -hmm. if the, if we sign a lease for 25, we're on the hook for 25. Right? We have yeah. 15 Two towns, so we need other. I mean, you look at, like, we had Foxbury, we yeah. had, you know. I, I would expect that it wouldn't be hard to get the So what we have right yeah. now is Wolcott, we'll Eden, Johnson, Cambridge, Hyde Park, of course, okay. and then Cambridge. Right. So we potentially have five. I mean, they they have to do something, so I don't mean to be rude. Well, no, no, option. no, that that's yeah. right. But I and and it's also if we have the five, and I'm just okay. So that gets us down to where, for each town, you're paying five thousand dollars a year, mm -hmm. um, and that just gives you the that gives you the access to being able to take door dogs there. It gives you a guarantee. Yes, wing okay. like now, we're cutting a wing off that we right. won't use at all. No, so now. Right. Yeah. Well, let me, right. Okay. Yeah. But then once you do that, then there'll be some kind of a daily fee for for anybody. I mean, if we were feeding the dogs, yeah. we'd have to do it. So right. feeding the dogs, yeah. And paying you guys to take care of Walking them. So you'll stuff. come up with some kind yeah, of a fee scenario of a yeah. of a fee for what that would be. Do you know if you want it per diem or like for the year or no cost? Or wind it into the lease. We didn't I know kind of think. We should put it in the cost. Just start with that. I mean, unless it's outrageous, because for the well, but we don't see for other towns. You, do you know how many dogs you have? Well, depends on the year. On yeah, the year. I kind of gave Betsy and Jason a little heads up so they yeah. came prepared with yeah, information. Right. 
Um, and we we talked about how some towns have more dogs that come in, uh, yeah. you know, different times of the year. Other towns might only have five dogs for the whole entire year. We don't know. So we were going to go by their average, and they were going to come up with a okay. With a now, when we took over, there was um, meticulous records dating all the way back to the seventies. Wow. Uh, okay. <laughs> that I promptly threw out. Uh, yeah. All paper. <laughs> you know, I was old say, paper. I was like, oh. Woo! so. Uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> but so there's a couple scenarios because if all if you do the 15 towns that used to have access all come in and then you might fill it 13 a day mm -hmm. so then it's like that cost benefit of so i don't know if you guys are talking yearly lease or like three-year lease we were kind of thinking so our daily rate is around 40 we we're thinking of doing nonprofit kind of rate, give you that so it'd be closer to 20. That's what we can start that for each one. And then on top of the 25. Each so if you had five, if dog. you had five dogs in there at a night or for the day, it would be five dogs. Yeah. And we would take care of right. all the cleaning and stuff right. like that. And then we could look at the larger items for adding on like the propane heater and that type of stuff, which would be a later discussion. Because we are open to like a, if you only stay one year, then we can talk about a prohibition or something like that too. But uh, a flat fee is hard to calculate because if you were too low and you fill it with 13, then that no. would cost right. us mm -hmm. an yep. old. Right. But we can also hire an employee at that point if we can find them. So we're open to those negotiations on that part. Okay. Yeah. If you think per diem is a way to go, or if you think I, a flat, I, I think I think the start per diem is because then yeah. a community we get coming in and just don't yeah. yeah and 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 each town you, they can look at sort of as a whole you yeah know, figure this out because each town should in their town office have yeah that record some kind of record something so yeah some idea what to they should at least have the record how much they've been paying and but even if you did get up to ten towns you know if it's two thousand or twenty five hundred for each town. That's not bad to have them know where they can take it off. You know, oh, no, no, that's, yeah. that's right. But it's also, again, not knowing how many there are. Yeah. Yep. We're probably better to, if we could start with the five, yeah. <laughs> just go, okay, well, let's see what happens yeah. and what you it looks like. like it works for you guys. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, and, and would think yeah. then with the, <laughs> and again, the, um, and if, and then maybe if what you can do is what bill monthly. Yeah. Yeah. Would we bill just the town of Hyde yeah. Park and then you would disseminate yes, each yes. town or the leases? We would have to disperse them. If we're the leasee, they'd be subleasing from us. Well, they are subleasing, but it, it right. doesn't but just more it's more paperwork. I don't know how if you would want to incorporate that into your contract with the towns, yeah, their fees. Instead of them incorporating incorporating it all at once, you see what I'm saying? So we're no, incorporating no, no, I, to each town. We have to be because say a town is like no, 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 I'll clean because you're saying per diem style. Right. Yeah. They're, they're saying no, I'll clean my own. And no, don't, don't want that. that. No, 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 this is what the deal is. Right. Okay. 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 You're okay. buying in okay. and everything is taken care of. Yep. Got a place. The dogs will be cared for. Yep. They're going to be going out three times a day. Yeah. Yeah. The, no, that, we're not going to just stick them in the pen. We're doing our normal process with them. As long as they're not times a day. Okay. Yes, yes. As long as they're not aggressive. <laughs> well, <laughs> right. yeah. um, so then just for we have the as Hyde Park is responsible for the heat and the putting that in the startup, I'm gonna call it startup costs, I guess. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Leasehold improvements. Yeah, so we have that too. Yeah. So then I'd say in doing that, that's something with the when People the buying in whatever that cost is, we split that up between the towns that come in initially. That's there's no reason for us to, you know, they're using it. Yeah. Again, it's a it, it we'll we'll pay the bill, but it's be sort of a one time cut fee that they right. would need to pay if they're if they're going to join in. So it would be the 
again, if, if we make it easy, it's $5,000 plus it will be whatever that additional yeah. part is. Right. And then knowing they'll have a, right now we'll use this number if it needs to change, tell me the $20 a day per dog that is there takes care of it. You're right, I guess you're right. If we take on the billing and then if somebody doesn't pay their bill, we just tell them not to, we just tell you exactly. not to accept any dogs. Yeah, exactly. right. mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and I think with us cleaning, uh, it will, we should have less that we need to do to the building theory. Yes. Um, yeah, you're right. Because mm -hmm. I trust myself more. Right. <laughs> right. And it's like coming in and out doing, yeah. doing cleaning. So I'm like, all right, well, I won't need as high of a. Of no, a right. Well, the main vision is the outside entrance that you came in. All dog officers can have access to that door, but only one person, Colonel Allen, will have access to get into the building. The rest of the building. The rest of the building. Yeah. Because she will be the point right. person if something yeah. is needed. Because right now you don't need anything. Let's say something. Um, but we have to make sure that they're aware that you guys are organizing, bringing them in. Yeah. You don't call us. We are not handling strays. We're not. Right. right. We're, for like organizing, like, I'm going to go pick up my stray and I'm going to call the kennels. So one question we had, are you creating like name for that side yeah. if you're right the, yeah and like a separate phone number <laughs> yes <laughs> uh, but it's important because there's reputation risk of yeah. if, if there's an aggressive dog right yeah. it gets rehomed yep. kills a dog yep. kills a person yep. exactly we don't want it coming from us right it was okay. from town well, not we town. Want, well <laughs> yeah yeah well if it's a cambridge <laughs> dog or a johnson right. dog yeah. If you guys are making that choice of rehoming it or taking it to the Humane Society right. or something right. like that. But that's what we saw in a few months that we took over is well, Jason and Betsy are in there, so we know that. Yeah. yeah. A Allie, lot of adoptions. Allie, how often would you you personally you take a dog up there? How would, would you adopt it out? Like, or would you would that ever happen? Well, there's parameters that that I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So traditionally. Um, it always went through NCAL, and then if NCAL rejected a dog, um, the towns typically would have it euthanized, um, or justice for dogs might take it. When we took over, for some reason, um, because there's no there was no policy in place saying people had to go through NCAL, dog officers just started doing it privately. Um, and so dogs were just going to whoever people could kind of find. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And yeah. so, which they had good intentions, yes. it just didn't, won't always, it didn't work. always work yeah. out. Um, I'm sure there's something in our ordinance about that 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 is allowed, but no, yeah, normally probably. Um, and it makes sense because people don't want the dogs euthanized. Yeah. So there was logic there, but. Um, a lot of the times the dogs had owners. Mm -hmm. yep. I mean, in our experience, that okay. just had lost their dogs, especially with the prevalence of Airbnbs. There's a lot of like out of towners mm -hmm. finding a dog in the neighborhood, okay. not knowing sure. it. And so we had a lot yeah. of, have, we see a lot of that. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. People okay. aren't which, used to city, people aren't used to dogs. Just real quick. Which brings us to, <laughs> I think you guys touched on it last night, one policy. So as the towns collectively, like, who will release it and what paperwork because sometimes towns didn't care if we've got proof of license. Just release it. Well, I don't think it has a license. Ah, we don't care. Okay. Each town is different. So you may want to just get your own policy for that as a or not, but exactly. might simplify your life for well, billing purposes. Because if they're if you're gonna because that's how you can pay for this basically. Exactly. Yeah, you know? exactly. So right. They used right. to do full disclosure, Jeff is my own goal. So I used to work as a kid. So your first offense was like 25 bucks. Second offense was 100. So you could implement something like that. So right. I mean, it's in everyone's guidelines. Yeah, just there's no reason it's more Yeah, Maybe it could be gone and all that, but just like, okay, I'm going to go. I just don't know why things, you know. Everyone's tired. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we'll, Matt's, we'll work with Matt and get a plan. Yeah. Drawn out. And then we need to make an official contract kind of. Mm -hmm. Right. We sat here for them to do talk with talk with the other towns. It seems to me as part of 
of doing this whole thing that it makes sense to, um, I know we need to update our fees and, and everything and to come up with a, um, basically you guys working together can probably do it. So here's the policy. So if somebody, before they yeah. get the dog, yes, you go, here's the checklist that has to be done. I mean, I, here's I, what I the costs are going to be. Towards the end there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but to have something like that and then anybody that's going to come in yeah. with us, that's what they need yes. to adopt. So we sort of slowly get, and again, if it works with the, we do we do the five the five come in for a while yeah, and it's it working well. Out. Oh, well and, and we've got some idea of what the capacity is mm -hmm. and how many dogs are showing up because of course there are going to be different times of year when it's really busy and there are a lot of yeah. dogs and Spring. Spring. other times yeah. sort of when you know when there's nothing but to and and then to be able to open it up to other towns to you know yeah. to, to to come in yeah. and it and that that would work. It's funny the same way with the interlocal <laughs> agreement with the assessor. Yeah. Is that well, if somebody comes in, you know, right now we do with five and it's costing you all five thousand dollars a year. Well, if another couple of towns come in, then it just costs that. everybody a little bit less. Mm -hmm. You know, but it, it just gets split equally. Yeah. Um, you do want uh, that protocol just to know what your procedure should be because there'll be a time where well I'm sure it makes I'm sure it makes sense sure there's gonna be a sick dog or an injured dog that brings in or yeah yeah, yeah you've yeah. done yeah, yeah. so uh I just know. something in writing do you want to hear about an hour or do you want, you want to wait well let's wait a second okay. so the the costs that have been just the categories of costs there's the mm -hmm. per day right yeah. and then there's the annual lease amount yeah. whatever that is you've been you've heard 2500 or 5000 uh, 25000 yeah it's yeah. the yearly yeah. yeah. and yes. then the um startup or the right. renovations or is there a budget yeah. for that piece or is it anybody thought about a number on that i don't so we just jot down some larger items that could you need that definitely need a propane type here um, i don't know what those costs borns has put in additional ones in the building so they're probably the best one to call for yeah yeah which makes sense if they're surface yeah we they're could even, we eventually would want a fence outside but that is something that could be negotiated, whether depending on how long the lease you're doing, that type of stuff. So we're open to discussion on that. We've got to put in a few exterior doors to upgrade to make sure they're better air quality. Um, we can just like, I mean, twenty five thousand as a renovation cost. It's not like two hundred thousand. It's oh, you know, it's kind of miscellaneous thing. Like, like we use the building in the summer, this past summer, but it's not winter. So okay. we don't use it in winter. I was we, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just trying to scale yes. for the minutes here. Yes. Well, and that's what so like if we want to negotiate a buyback, we want to be involved in what you're putting in for heater because we don't want to put a two hundred thousand dollar heater in. No, I mean you usually you know that type of thing. So we can yeah, kind of work together be, and say like, there's gonna be three documents. Most of them are drafted by the town attorney that yeah. address all your concerns. One will be because of the other towns it will be an interlocal type agreement, which has an attachment to it, which is the operational issues that you're talking about. So the interlocal agreement itself deals with towns coming and going and how things are changed or amended, all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff for the town's purposes to be members, let's say, yeah. of this collapse. And then you have this agreement, which is all these operational things you're talking about, that check, who goes where, who's responsible for X, and have all those predetermined operational things. So you're not going by seat your pants. Yeah. So, I mean, those, and then there's the, the commercial lease arrangement, which will have a whole bunch more stuff. That's a lot of it's standard language, but it deals with renewables in three years, and who pays who and who's the primary parties and all that stuff. So all those things are doable in the sense of documents. The town attorney's main concern, because he, he just had, he's a municipal attorney, but he's also seen enough that he's concerned about the operational piece. So he all those things that we just talked, I just mentioned are not not hard. They're they're right. just time. Yeah. The what if scenarios, yeah. all that kind of stuff. The the biggest issue is in uh sustainability, operational issues, uh day to day. 
Right. So having you involved solves that. Yeah. Well, that's it's kind of what our biggest issue is. Yeah. So then we were like, let's right. just to have, move it. You know, Allie's here, here now. She's not yeah. here next year. You guys have right. to, you have to be friendly with 15 or 10 or 5 ACO. Well, not friendly with some. So I was like, <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> going on. There's so I think business. that was his biggest concern. Not friendly with yeah. Yeah. So having the biggest concern addressed yeah. is good because yeah. that kind of frees up things that are a little more fun, like the site plan that Matt's a land designer. So he designed yeah. and has all this gizmos and software. Lasers. Yeah. 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 yeah so he, that, he'll be able to do a nice plan for, he's donating. So it'll be a nice plan that yeah. can be used again or change. Yeah. Well, because the kennels are all still in there and good to go. So really yeah. you're just talking about. You don't have an old floor plan with all the kennel designs or anything? Guaranteed. Somewhere. 100%. <laughs> I mean, I have, I have, yeah, remember this is for a town landfill. Everything is still there. Um, I still have a few of those large papers. Yeah, yeah. You can open so, up, actually. It may, it, may like not, it may not help Matt a lot, depending yeah. on the quality of that. But if you guys set up a site visit, which yeah. I think Matt does want to do, mm -hmm. then maybe have those yeah. plans found. Yeah, and I mean- That's what we found. Use it or use panels. it or- we'll You are getting our two premium suites. <laughs> right. There's two huge panels down. <laughs> yes, They're we'll, our best We'll ones. rent them back yeah. to you. Yeah. 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 We'll yeah. require them to serve it. So. See? Yeah, look at us. See, we could totally do a deal with that. We get free service if our dogs are in there for a Like, wait, now we're losing buys. How is this happening? Because you'll still be making money. All right. Good. Thanks for the clarification. So, yeah. Montpelier vet, um, Nick Drulay, he's the owner. Uh, he is very interested, pending more details uh, about doing being the on-site vet at Betsy and Jason's, um, being available for any of the towns that that take part in this lease. Um, so that that's a separate conversation that we need to have with him. You know, like fees, things like that. Um, he's my also my personal vet. He's the only vet in the area that will do house call, um, even though he's not in our rent area. But he's always reasonable, timely, um, just great vet. Um, but yeah, so this is a conversation we should have with him um, to, to find out more about fees. I talked to Betsy, she probably told Jason, but um, <laughs> they have a, a room. <laughs> they have a room. Oh, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> that NCAL actually used to use when NCAL started up there. Uh, that I talked to Betsy about turning into like an exam room. So it's a clean area for dogs that come in that are sick that we can bring over there and the vet can examine in that specific space. Um, Nick was very interested in that part because it, you know, it's cleanly. So, yeah. Um, so we would just want to know what constitutes a vet visit yeah. because I think that was hard for us was um, having animals that we thought needed vet right. care um, that didn't get vet care. Right. So I, I and, and again, I think that's the kind of thing because the pounds taking on right. responsibility. Yeah. And we make the call and yes. need it, then it's yes. Uh, the people can pay the bill and exactly. they can adopt yeah. the animal. Exactly. Yeah. And that's yeah. kind of, you know. I'm not asking for like, you know, yeah, for every dog, right? At the yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I'm sure y'all have had a dog or been around a dog in your life, but, you know, a dog might come in the first day. If I picked up a dog, he might come in the first day. He's totally fine. And then the next day, Betsy's like, hey, this dog's coughing, you know, probably a kennel cough. Um, so that would, you know, be a vet visit because. Kind of have to keep that from spreading and right. treat the dog. Not that anything is, you know, a real fix for it, but it right. helps. Right. Okay. So let me see. From here, we need more company. So Matt, let right. Matt do a drawing. Yep. Let's get estimates as to the fit up cost, yep. whatever that's, you know, whatever that needs to be. Come up with a here's the policy of what it should look like so mm -hmm. that we can have if you will, a master policy. Anybody that's going to buy in, here's what you, you need to do. Yep. We know in the meantime, as we've talked about, we need to update our fees and our policies. So yeah. whatever we're updating it to, here it is. We'll get all yes. that all that done. I think you want to do that with all the towns. Well, I guess it's on them to recoup their fees. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
if, if they don't want to come in, it sounds like there are plenty of towns that would be happy to <laughs> yes, buy in. Right. So, um, the other thing that we talked about is they don't want any part of the paperwork <laughs> of dealing with the dog. So we kind of came up with a, a, a little bit easier way to handle things. So say a dog comes in, it's held at the kennels for three days, right? Um, we find the owner. We I would ask the owner to come straight to Krista or Kim, register your dog if it's not registered, give them your rabies certificate, pay the fees yep. here. Yep. And then make an appointment with me to come pick up your dog. Yep. That way it's easier. There's no other paperwork passed around. And you know, we don't have to have a cash or card system up there to process yeah. anything yeah. or store no, files. Right. So yeah. coming right. straight here would be. Don't have bad dogs from another town. Same thing. They would do it for their own town. Okay. And that's something. So the owners, when they would pick their dogs up, would pay us the fee for their stay at the kennel. So you can just include that in your fees yes. now right. instead. Right. So traditionally, what was it? Oh my god. The owner would pay the town and no, phone. the owner would pay us everything. everything. We'd send it all to the town and then the they town would send back. our portion back. Yeah, there was too much. There was, there's probably a more difficult way to do it. I was like, what am I doing here? Um, yeah. yeah. But also to piggyback on what she just said, that's where the vet would come in. If the dog doesn't have this rabies vaccine, the on-site vet. Come right there, give it the rabies vaccine, and then the person picking up the dog that's is built nice. for that visit and yeah, the vaccine. Yeah. So this assures that the dogs are registered and the dogs do have their rabies bags yeah. before they are let go. Yep. Yeah. Well, I figured it would save me going around knocking on people's doors. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. No. So. No, definitely. That that sounds like we can suddenly end up with a very comprehensive policy and yeah. dogs that are well cared for. Exactly. And think of those all those Airbnb people and their dog wanders off and how much money we make that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> all those, yeah, she's in a paper. There's it's several not Airbnbs not in our areas and we've, really we've had several dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Now just dogs. bring it right to yeah. Allie and be like, no, I need to here. <laughs> <laughs> I know where you go, but you go here. You can just check with the local Airbnbs and bees and say, somebody missing a dog? <laughs> <laughs> Those, those poor city dogs that are lost in all oh, this open space just kind of going, whoa. Sensory overload. <laughs> yes, it really is for them. Did you have anything else on your paper, Jason? That uh, we might do like a, a supplies because yes. you're going to be ordering beds and they're pretty expensive. So you want to work that into it as like a supplies budget. Um, we figured it might be easier for you guys just to do one sum and then we will divvy out stuff for all the stuff that's needed. For like the beds, I don't know. You guys know more about the beds. So, the beds one more time. So I'll speak a little bit, and then you yeah. speak the rest. Um. So by doing ordering these beds, uh, they're anti-chew. Yeah, lifetime, yeah. They're so if you guys strong. ever built a building on your own, you you take, you'd take yeah beds with yeah you. easy to clean, sanitary. Um, and if we order when. They do more. <clears throat> sure, just make it a bigger order. A bulk order. Yeah, the price goes the price down. down. So yeah, like easier. Weird, I mean, so I'm even getting sure. in on this order for my own space. So. I want in on the Um, but yeah, what, yeah. what else about the base? But just to go all all making it. Uh, you guys have to pay me to assemble it. Up there, I'm in the booth <laughs> to assemble. So <laughs> the worst. I'll, I'll help you. Yeah. I think the night of it. But okay, it, and again, just yeah. to throw all those things, just get cost to us because yeah. then when we're talking to other towns, we can say, yeah, here's what it's going to cost you. Here's a breakdown on the cost. Here's what you're paying for. Yeah. Like, you know, here are going to be several one-time fees getting, you know, because we're getting it up and running. Yeah. Yeah. And technically, you know, like, if, well, there again, if the town wanted to purchase the beds and we yeah. rented the beds to the other towns, then you're going to get No, see, back. that just starts to get. I know. It gets nitpicky, no, but. No, no, not nitpicky. <laughs> that just makes it too complicated. <laughs> no. So I mean, no. The life of the bed. Uh, <laughs> well, no. <laughs> so you would have your own propane set up to make sure you include that when you're talking to mm -hmm. them. So then you can allocate your own for the propane. Um, electric, we were just thinking maybe we'd split something or check our schedules and maybe do it. 20% or 25%. Just, yeah, just right. check just, yeah. Yeah. It's more of depending on the time frame we're getting in because if you run space years, then it's going to check. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. right. So I didn't what? know what your time frame was. If that's like, are we six months away? Are we trying to get as soon as possible? That type of thing. 
I'd say it's probably looking at Allie, it's probably as soon as possible because yeah. um, the need is so the media. Lawyer, right. Lawyer. Right. That's why I look at wrong. <laughs> yes. So we're willing to work fast and just, yeah, I don't know if we'll go. I'm we sorry. Get what? <laughs> we <laughs> can get the propane here. heater in and stuff. I don't know. So it's kind of a step. Well, off. there's cost. Yeah, it'll be all cost to that. So I think yeah. the, the initial needs list will be clear okay. as a first step what yeah. the site was it. Yeah. And then we can start to push things to a budget. The question of the setup, which is sort of the fun stuff, beds or yeah. blankies or what all the stuff dogs need to. No, uh, <laughs> no I'm just saying you, you have this list of yeah. needs. You you could, and I haven't looked at this yet, whether the town has access to funding support to help with this initial setup. Right. So that we don't have to ask for the 25000 We just have a grant from some, yeah. you know, dog food company that has a grant to set up a kennel facility. So those things can be explored in the interim, but we still need that initial yeah, yeah. budget. Right, yeah, right. We gotta have a budget. You know, are you talking so if we you're need, talking we need a what do we need to get this going? Yeah, I think it's the it's yeah. the if we want to do it really quick, it may be two two steps. One doesn't have any of these approvals. Right. We just have an emergency and we can run here instead of yeah. Arlington. We have a space that's here. that's like an interim space handshake here. deal. Yeah emergency mode kind of thing up yeah. there mm -hmm. so that can happen with you talking to Allie and and $100 some, in money. <laughs> emergency fee yeah. so that could be separate from this mm -hmm. more formal thing with mm -hmm. the other towns and trying to get all these documents right. together yeah, so at least we have an immediate solution right. versus yeah. Burlington so that's mm -hmm. one suggestion the other set you know we can get those documents together pretty quickly because we have it we have a lot of those in, in, sure in template form play, yeah mm -hmm. so it's really about the dollars and they, you know, Eden asked and Johnson asked tonight, just via communication. So what are we talking about? We know you're talking, but it's so early. It's hard to give them a good answer. Right. Like, you're yeah. saying. Right. Right. but uh, I think we can, I, I think the 25 to 35,000 is a really good re renovation budget potentially. It's like a lot. I don't think it's going to be that high. No, but if we yes, yes. let's go high. Let's go with so, all you the know, We just, we yeah. just got to. Well, you might want to include the beds and everything. In yeah. The yeah. Okay. It's just it's like you're set up. Especially with the supply chain. Like, you want to order stuff soon yeah. because it takes yeah. forever. Things like propane, it's almost double what is it five years ago. Yeah. So if, if you're operating under any kind of preconceived notion of what things cost, yeah. you almost have to double it from. We should be renovating the other side of the building. So, my. Anyways, whatever whatever it is, it is. But yeah, I think the quicker that we knock off those needs lists, yeah. the quicker right. that Savannah can hold a town's meeting and have actual select board members here to talk yeah, about. Yeah, how do you approve something like this? Do you have to do any? She will Yeah, it's a package. Well, we will, well yeah. It's, it's, is it we're we're going to be the one who are going to do it, and then it's it's going to be the individual towns are going to sign in with yeah. us. So it's our approval, and we're going to be the ones front and doing everything. Anyways, or... yeah. I think we're we can do renewables. Year. You can do a five-year lease renewable every year because the voters have a lot of say at town meeting day. Yeah. Well, that's why I didn't know what we but, do all this work for one year, and the rest of the town says no, we don't want to do that. Yeah, we we run that with the sheriff's department every year. The, mm -hmm. the sheriff well, sheriff has a, a annual appeal for police patrol. Right. Yes. That makes to sense. three towns. You know, this would be the same kind of thing. Yeah. There's no way to uh, commit money for more than the year. Yeah. Right. But the agreement can cover multiple years because okay. it solves a problem. That I think sense. most towns commit money to end count and justice. On an annual basis. Other so end so you want to give the taxpayers a way out is what that's all about. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think my only concern is if we do a large capital propane heater, that type of stuff, and you exit year one, we're going to be actually out because we don't <laughs> yeah. need to, need to okay. eat that. Here. So those are yeah. that's those are items for the commercial lease. So in the yeah, commercial so lease, that's where I think I'm leaning towards at least two years. Or see, we we can, we can do the we can do the, the multiple, but we, yeah. we can't we can't spend money those yeah. extra years out. Right, right. So we can commit to the re, to the renewal, and uh, 
I can't see why in the name of anything, yeah. anything but I, this wouldn't end up being. Yeah, that, that that's right. And and as Ron said, that's why you know you what you put in the commercial lease, so yeah. that if it doesn't work, then you guys aren't suddenly confronted with needing to immediately pay for yeah, whatever. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. We'll just stay here. <laughs> do what you need to do. Yeah, and we need the whole city. <laughs> so, 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 I'm so, yeah. playing just pulling no, it out. I think right. a lot of that's going to be another day because yeah. this is really up here, yeah. and then we'll be done with so the weeds later. So, what do you need from us for next steps? I guess I think, is what, yeah, like uh, we got to make a meeting with Matt. 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 Yeah. Um, and then the improvements list for and the budget. The the list for the, for the budget. Yeah. And I guess when you do the estimates, do a time frame. Like if Bob Warren's are we like, doing the estimates or are no, you we'll doing do the estimates? We'll, we'll, we'll work together. Okay, sounds yeah. good. We'll, we'll work cool. All right. But if we want to find like it, you know, call Warren's and then yeah. say this, but you'll have been, long out. Right? You know, the make model stuff that you were mentioning before. Yeah. You want to have input in that. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so the pilot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dribble powered. Yeah. Yes. Um, the, the, Dog powered. Dog powered. <laughs> yeah. Um, at the same, can we just like make it we'll add one more thing to the immediate list? Um, but won't be installed until Please spring. Know. Well, no, I don't worry about that. <laughs> um, an AC unit for summer because yes, we need that on there too. That's a list. It's not okay. too too bad in there. Yeah. yeah, actually, that's our cooler. Yeah, we it's... need an AC unit, so we should have toilets. Yeah, because it's open, it's half of it is open. Yeah, outside yes. there is good airflow. Yeah, right. good airflow. What you would probably have to do is add in wrapping the outside. Yes. You used to do wrap mm -hmm. to help yeah. keep it in, and you open it up. So right. it does. It doesn't get too hot. Right. It's surprisingly, it's it's usually ten to fifteen degrees cooler. Cool. cool because of the cement. Cement. Yes. Okay. So I thought it looked great. great. It looked really nice in there. Okay. Yeah. So we'll work together. We'll get crazy. I, I think it's a good partnership. So we're yeah. I think yeah. I think it's just uh, figuring out those fine details. Well, I like I like knowing to know that there are all these other towns that want in. That makes me yeah. say, oh, okay, we can. Do I know, that. right? You know. We can do this. Yeah. 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 They didn't send a lot, but we did have. Well, they seats. they were there. And, right. Well, yeah. once it's there, and and again, once we have this, we can say, okay, here's what happens, and we can, you know, probably do it with a letter, or do a Zoom call or something, and say, mm -hmm. send a letter, and here's what, and and give them a date to know by, because if you aren't, then we're going to look for other partners. And it's only half of it, so once you get all fifteen on, then we can expand and double it. <laughs> That's true. Hey, slow it. <laughs> and then we have this cat room. So that's right. <laughs> we don't pick up cats. Oh, you know, we do not pick up cats. Yeah. You have the chihuahua. Okay. I know. So I I've think. thought about it every day. Oh, I <laughs> did. Uh, justice, we, because we have a partnership with Justice, so the Justice dog has been there for over a couple of years. Really love the dog. But he's just. He's a lot. He's a big dog. Yes. And people are scared of the dogs. Oh, he's so yes. nice yes. and handsome. Yes. Oh, oh, we took like a. Hour hike in the rain the other day, so it was like real cool. Okay, I awesome. all right, okay. so, all right, yep, yep. You guys sort it out, come back as soon as you can, and we'll this we'll move this, it. This, 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 this. I know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, thank you for your time. No, you thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Also, so great to work out everybody's right into the meeting. Yeah. Okay. Hey, they're all. <laughs> um, do you guys want to go to Pamela? Do you want like one uh, right after Christmas, like your next selective meeting? Yeah, why don't you try right after, well, the beginning of the year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah just go for the beginning of the year. Next meeting. Yeah, yeah. Sounds, okay. good. sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Have a good holiday. Hey, yeah, thank you. Now let's go to money. <laughs> if there was ever a perfect ARPA project, there it is. We take care of the whole town. <clears throat> but yeah, and then the house could have buy in to recover some of the ARPA money. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> So, <laughs> well, it's just one of the. Oh, everybody should share. Everybody part, should share. That part figured out. Okay. So any now so, to so, money. Chastity, you have a budget. Yep. 
Okay. So this is a, this is the first draft. The, the first page usually is revenue. There's nothing really to report on revenue. Sad to say, we do have some interest earned, which is good news from Jen's work and uh, T bill investments and those kind of things, which is one of the few things increasing actually for revenue. We have some very so that that's not presented tonight just because it's not important. Right. <laughs> okay. What's important is trying to look. You can look at the last page uh, with a nine point seven percent budget cool. increase. Most of that, just to give you a broad brush first, um, you'll see in highway. So we had um, that 9.7 is an increase of 300,000. 130,000 is highway itself. Um, 126 is in administration. And most of that is in... Um, wages and benefits. So wages and benefits, both highway and general administration equal just a, about a 250,000 more than last year. So you're you're starting at a $300,000 challenge. Most of the departments are coming in at a flat or zero. Uh, library actually looks like it wasn't wasn't updated. They had a very small increase. Of eleven thousand. Yeah, yeah was fine. Uh, fires the same way. I think they were down at one or two percent. So well, that the fire thing thing was the is the water thing. Yes. Yeah, actually, I don't. Yeah, so overall, there. So, so it's really those two departments. This will be updated. You know, the actual column. I grabbed this from a report from June thirty, so it still needs to be reviewed and audited numbers. So that. Don't pay too much attention to that, but that will change with the um, audit numbers, which won't be available for this report. So we'll actually have a note on here saying unaudited actual 23. So that's the big, you know, what do you do? So what do you do with highway and general admin? Not a heck of a lot for FY25. I have a question about the highway and the paving. Yeah, I think let's, let's focus on highway for a second. Yep. Yeah. It's on they had the budget for FY23, and then the actual was nothing. And I understand it's going up probably, the cost of it. What, what are the paving? I just, oh, I'm sorry, okay. Yeah, for, yeah, FY23, that money, the 180 was spent on a transfer to the center loan fund. So center loan had, had to pay off last 23. So that's what that all that money went to pay off a loan. It wasn't spent on paving. Okay. So we're we Jen and I have been going back and forth on how to show that because okay, if, you, so if you look at expenses okay. and you see 180, you think new pavement. And yeah. it was really loan payment. So okay. we've been going back and forth on how to present that. We may have a footnote down the bottom. If we put the 180 in there, right. It'll be a okay. footnote that paid a loan wasn't new. It's important to track not doing new paving. It's very important because it puts you further and further behind every time you do yeah, that. Yeah, right. And then the prices have doubled or whatever. Right. So then, go. right. So the current year, 24, you have 215000 with a proposal to increase by 30000 So uh, for FY25 to 245 the goal to keep up with deterioration and inflation is three hundred. So you're still 55000 behind the goal on paving. I'm not even sure we can do the 30,000 to tell you the mm -hmm. truth because paving and capital, which is at the end of the budget, are the two lines that you often take from. <laughs> Jen, Jen and I, uh, maybe the new town administrator, if he comes in a little earlier than February 5th, could look at this uh, from two perspectives. And Jen, Jen or I will do it if, if the new town administrator doesn't join in. <clears throat> FY24 has some of the same problems in here because some of the changes have happened. Fifth person in highway, new town administrator, zoning administrator. Those things have happened in 24. So there's already costs that are we're looking forward to June 30. That Jen will somebody will have to calculate to uh, compensate for employee cost this year, this year. from ARPA money. Right. 
talked to VLCT, Katie Buckley, who puts out a lot of the town advice uh, th through her ARPA director role. And I think she's kind of titled so close to that. She still is recommending a closeout of ARPA uh, by all the towns by March 31st through a transfer from our special revenue fund called ARPA to the town general fund. And when you vote in her recommendation, when you vote that is to apply it to employee um, retention. So you'd actually have a motion of the board, which gets reported to U.S. Treasury because you have to report all your actions on a form April 1st. That's why she's using by April, March 31st. Closed out whatever the balance is. Let's say it's 500,000 out of your 740 because we spent 100, whatever, 200,000 something. Whatever that balance is. Transfer to the general fund revenue for employee retention. She's 100% confident that that satisfies U.S. Treasury's uh, requirement to commit that to that. Because we have over, it's 500,000, we have over $500,000 worth of employee costs in FY24. So you're, you're paying those real costs of the current year. But won't that in 26? No, at the, in June 30 of 24, you'll have an unassigned fund balance spike because you're you know you're spending money on wages and you're not spending the money that you had tax people for as part of the budget so it's a shift it's a slide of the money to change its name from arpa to general revenue employee retention which creates a surplus if you will at june 30 the arpa fingers controls stop when you vote to transfer the money from the ARPA revenue to the general fund revenue. And that means nobody gets their wish list. No, I'm, it's a long story. It's not done yet. Oh, so that's okay. one thing. That I still have the money, but- But that clears the-, the But oh, that okay. clears the- Get the feds out. Yeah, US Treasury rules stop when you once right. you obligate that oh, money okay. to the current year expenses. Right. Second problem is you spike your unassigned fund balance because we won't spend unless you continue to do what you're doing, um, which is piecemealing projects kind of thing at a regular pace, not a dramatic pace. But if you end up closing out all those projects and spending all your money on a dump truck or whatever um, by June 30, then you could have a normal unassigned fund balance. You won't have a spike. The spike, if it ha does happen because you couldn't spend the money, is when your fund balance policy kicks in. Your fund balance policy says you shall not keep more than 20% of budgeted revenue in your unassigned fund balance. So that means at that point, you have to come up with a plan to obligate the money or reduce taxes. When it, that's what the policy says. You have, you have to do that. Yeah. You can't keep it at 20%. You have to work that down. Let's see, I, I don't. So that provides more time. You don't have to do it on July 1st, no. but you, you have to do it over time before you. I think the intention was that you, Let's if see. you have that much money, you lower taxes was one of the intentions. But that's an artificial lowering, too, which is a, well, yeah, creates its own problem. Just catastrophic. It creates its own <laughs> problem. Yeah. 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 No. So, so if we, if we go ahead and, and move the money, let's just say <laughs> April 1st, April Fool's Day. So let's see. So we've moved the money. Then how long do we have to? We have. There's no time limit. Once you, once no, you. No, 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 no. Before I trigger oh. the unassigned, gotta you know people. Well, you can look at that two ways. You don't actually know your unassigned fund balance in an audit world until your FY24 audit's done. That's usually that's how we would operate. Well, the rate we've been going that be several years from now. No, 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 no. 24 is the first on schedule. Oh, okay. <laughs> because our HR is okay. going to be right on it. Okay. We'll probably get 23 close to town meeting day or a little after. And then immediately they can start working on 24. So we'll have 24 for your December. I just wonder how much time do I have to, do I need to spend the 500,000 before? If you, know, you say, well, if you say, because we don't know for sure what the unassigned fund balance of 24 is until the audit is presented to you, that's your time frame. And that's going to be December, early January 25. You'll have that, you have that much time 
before the unassigned fund balance is known. So, so you we can have plenty of time to spend that money before and we got our coming be, right? before we really confuse the public is going, what are you doing? <laughs> That's that's what I'm just to not. Now, the other answer, the other answer is that Gen and the Nemric system can project a pretty close unassigned fund balance as of June 30 to give you the amount that you should yeah, be spending. Well, they, yeah, but that's on that's we, the we, unaudited number. Right, but well, you're right. But we'd have a good ballpark, and if we think it's 470, if we spend 420, we're safe, kind of a thing. Yeah. So obligations, obligation. This is contract. This is money that's not spent yet. Mm -hmm. federal government will take back money that's not obligated by December 31st, 24. So that's really your drop dead on obligations, right. which is a contract. They just came out with new rules in November. You can't, the only way you can obligate is to actually have a work contract or an order or a commitment to another entity to spend that money. Or you can transfer it to North Hyde Park Eden Fire Department, which we've done our Hyde Park Fire District number one, which we've done. And that's an obligation too, because you're actually getting, you're not spending it yourself, but you're obligating it to another entity. You could do that as another. Right. So that only happens if we don't transfer it into one. Right. Once, once we get, we can you, and get the feds out, then it. Yeah, once you get the, right. Once you get the feds out, if you're going to keep the money, it's right. different. If you're going to spend it with that one transfer, I asked her today, I said, right. Katie, if, what, if that goes the first time, there's no more strings on that. And she's like, no, you have your own policies to deal with. Okay. So you're talking about two different, who's right. going to care? Exactly. Exactly. You're talking about taxpayers and your policy. Right. The U.S. Treasury cares about obligation right. and transferring it into the general fund revenue for a specific purpose. So you can just, and I, I can see what she, her perspective is to be done with it from a federal perspective. Exactly. It still doesn't solve your problem of your internal policies and trying no, to no, meet the spirit of the recovery money. Yeah, right. Some okay. people I still feel like you should be meeting the spirit of the recovery no, money. No, I think we should. I think that's definitely what you ought to be doing. But you have more so, time under your policies than you would under the... Absolutely. Okay. And and less, you know... Yeah, you, the, the Fed, Senate like can... Not, yeah. right, right. And, and that was her concern, that, too. That you can't right. predict the U.S. Congress. So if, if all these towns, every town in the United States has to report at least by April 1st what their unobligated amount is. That money gets reported to U.S. Treasury. U.S. Treasury has the data. Some congressman calls them up and says, how much of that money has not those towns spent yet? And they draft a bill that says we can give every 90 days or we're going to get it back. Yeah, right. So that's that was Katie's concern is that you can't predict that. But if you've obligated and transferred it out to some other purpose as as revenue, you're off that. We're off that about Okay, so, fascinating. Are you slightly confusing? Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. <laughs> only slightly confusing. You you got the gist of this argument and the choices. Chas, <laughs> she said, "I gave up. I quit on you." <laughs> If, if we if we go ahead and move the money to ourselves, okay, I'm just saying it's just literally, then that gets the federal government out of it. Then we can use some of that. Well, first of all, we're going to use it for 24 for the increases that we have in our in our and, and again, I just think of this as one time money. This but the increases in administration costs that we have this year and salaries that we have this year, we use that. It's a about thirty five thousand. Is that about the right number, Ron? I think it's about thirty five thousand. Sorry, I was taking. No, that's okay. For it for this year, so that takes care of of the money for this year. Then, if in twenty five, if we use, mm -hmm. I think the additional administration costs and our benefits are about seventy thousand. If we use, if we cover half of that with this one-time money, then what we've done is we're we're phasing in the, our higher administrative costs over, okay. over over at least a year. And if the money's all ours, we could even potentially, you know, you might be able to do it a little bit further than that, so that the so that the increase stays with within again as we try to do the, you know, the 
around for if if we do between four and five percent a year regularly, that's nobody else is doing that. Can't wait to see what the school does. Heaven help them. Yeah, um, I think that's I think that's a good way to look at it because the, the impacts that we talked about the two hundred fifty thousand, if you will, is. 100% attributed to benefit changes, which you don't have control of, people switching coverage and all that stuff, as well as the new hires. Uh, there's four of them in the last you know, 24 months that all have some impact on your 25 budget for the first time. So if phasing that in, uh, you still have to cover your 24, which really isn't a budget thing. It's an operational year. Uh, Jen, I think think and probably the new town administrator should be charged with that phase phase right off. right i think that's a really good first task for those two folks to work together on uh to guide the select board towards june 30 24 how much money has to be applied to the current year as well as projecting out the next couple of fiscal years uh so that um once you lose your arpa constraints I think your policy right we've, would, we've transitioned in and it isn't like i think that's a, a i think you, the whole discussion has to change is like you guys have a, a large unassigned fund balance our plan is yes we have a cap of 20 percent we have a we have a 70 percent over i'm just using rough right, numbers right. on june 30. we're going to reduce that to 50 percent over on june 30 25. we're going to reduce it to 20 percent over that 20 percent right. you know we're going to bring it down over three years as we phase in well right and, and, and brent's gonna have all sorts of new ideas for revenues and then that new source of revenue will cover the other years going forward well to maintain your tax rate right. but, you know that's a concept though <laughs> right. But, and, and again, so there's the, um, it's a master plan of sorts. Yeah. And, and, and it lets us go through some staff growth at a not horribly painful, you know, impact, but then giving some, and, and again, do, do we then, and I, there's the, the conversation of do you take this one time money and you want to put more into paving or do we we know we've got you know we've got big equipment expenses coming up to use that to be the the bulk of mm -hmm. and which means we we don't have to like again you assign that money into the funds that take care of purchasing equipment so we don't have to go out and borrow money to do that mm -hmm. and you and you don't have to raise taxes to do that Right. I also just worry about you know the people that ask for money and I feel bad. You know, some it's a wish list. Oh yeah, get, that, that's right. And, and there's and some of them that you know you know that we've sort of taken care of. And I think to go through there and again some of them are you know there are a lot of fifteen and twenty thousand mm -hmm. dollars sort of requests. So you take five or six of them and you did you know helping taking care of the cemeteries with the fences and all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. That that helps everybody in Hyde Park. Yeah, that's making an investment in the. In the community, so you know, to go through and look at that at that stuff. Um, the other big issue that's kind of hanging out there, which has just started, the planning commission. I think they approved Monday night a survey, a sewer district customer survey of some sort for North Hyde Park. Part of that project will be over the long term significant costs if it becomes a project. So it, they're doing the scoping now. So they're reaching out to the public, trying to figure out if there's interest, you know, do people want to invest in their property that they can't do without public sewer, those kind of questions. Does the town want us to dedicate um, to that project, future project, which could require some, some match money, you know, for either design work or construction work down the road. And just have that as a as a question, and this is what Mark Town Meeting Day twenty four could look like. If you really want to have that kind of accelerated, if you want to accelerate, uh, we can project what the ARPA available balance is plus your other projects, yeah. and see if the voters want to have some say on obligating money to projects too. Mm -hmm. On, on stuff that you as a board are like, wait a minute, we have, this is this is a new to maybe we should put this out to the voter, that kind of thing. 
uh, say $100,000 of ARPA to the North Dyke Park Wastewater Project. That would be a really big generator of discussion, but it's also going to be money that could be needed to make that project happen. If the project dies, the money goes back to the to this out of sight fund balance, obviously. Right, and and again, that's the kind of thing we investing you, in the you, future. You, but, you know. Well, you, you as a community, you talk about wanting to grow, but you cannot grow without infrastructure. Mm -hmm. You know, and when the the village did their you know upgrading and everything down here, they didn't they didn't put anything into that would help do more development down here, and really looking at. Hyde Park as a town, if we're going to get some kind of development, it's going to be in North Hyde Park. So while there's this opportunity and we're looking at doing infrastructure and it always comes down to, you know, sewer and water, you know, that um, that, that that's where it's going to happen. Again, that's a that's a, a long term investment. So if we want to, if we got, it, I think, any hope of growing anything besides houses, which I'm happy with nice houses, but um, yeah, because it's money you can put aside and if it doesn't get used, that's fine. Then it comes back in and you can use it for something else. But um, anyway, that was, I just, it's yeah, opportunity, it it, opportunities. Yeah, yeah, and, there, you know, how many board meetings have I been to in Hyde Park where people say we need to do something with the Grand List commercial base? Yeah. Almost every select board member. Sure. I'm not well, talking about yeah. a vote. I'm not talking about a vote of five. I'm talking all five every time it comes up. Nobody has said let's regress and take down commercial property and put you know agricultural exempt land up. <laughs> you know, they haven't, we haven't done that. Right. It's right. A, if the few spots that we have, the business park and VFW, the industrial park up at North Hyde Park, uh, tried for a few years to get anything happening in Hyde Park Village, which a few things did happen. Namely, the car dealership, the car dealership yeah. and not preventing things like uh, Broso to do his small project outside the villages. So the town has done these things, but not to the extent that it's affecting property taxes right. to reduce them. And the only way to do that is with what Susan said, which was get your infrastructure done, water, sewer, electric, fiber is going to be done. There's really going to be no limitations of infrastructure with the wastewater piece. There is a huge limitation without the wastewater. The other things are happening and there's already public water up there. There's good roads and there's going to be fiber. So the only, and there's going to be a 5G cell tower at some point from the fire station. So everything that almost everybody else has will be up in North Hyde Park, except for the sewer. So the, the worst thing you could do is dedicate it and not have a project happen. <laughs> Yeah, That's and then the worst and, thing and, and the money, and then you get the money back. So you know, someplace in the future. And and you know, in Westford, where I'm, I'm helping them out, one of the problems was they asked the public question sort of at the end of whether you support okay. wastewater. Hyde Park could flip that around and ask it at the beginning. Just saying, that's a different, a different approach, a little more aggressive, <laughs> a little more aggressive because you got to well, put some real money away. It, it is, but it it takes. Um, and I probably, again, because of years in the in the legislature, um, one time money is a blessing and a curse. You know, I, I, I think a lot of the curse from the legislature is going to come back this year because they did a whole bunch of things last year that were based on one time money. And, and you can't, you, can, <laughs> you know, I mean, just, you know, looking at this, here's this tax. I'm, I really... I personally really think I, I like supporting young families and good childcare and all that sort of stuff. However, you gotta have a really sustainable way to do it and they keep increasing that tax and that's not gonna be top popular and it's not gonna happen, you know? And, and, and so to be able to, and it's very tempting when you have a bunch of one-time money to buy all kinds of bright, shiny things as opposed to taking a chunk of it and putting it aside that isn't bright and shiny and well, the the problem that that uh, you know that the unemployment folks are having because that their technology is thirty years old and I know the governor was saying the other day and I I remember we were trying to get the legislature to to invest in you know and at that time you say it would be five or six million dollars a year in upgrading technology and they didn't want to do that because that isn't fun and exciting you know you're better to send it home to roads in the in your communities as opposed to well we're buying technology for the unemployment office you know it's like 
I don't want to do that. So it can be very hard to get people to not to not do the bright and shiny, you know, and to and, and, and to go with delayed gratification. It's, mm -hmm. it's um, it can be hard to do, but frequently that's a much better payoff. So we can yeah, we'll sort of work our way through the whole thing and see. I think it would be interesting to give the ask at town meeting, say, here are a variety of choices. Yeah, you know, and and you can you can talk about it here, but then of course, because so many people don't make it to town meeting, but to sort of have that open as the beginning of here are four or five choices, here are a couple of different directions we can go. You guys think about it, but you know, here's a sheet and do something and let let people think about it for a while. One of the good things is there's a lot of money for the shelter, the emergency shelter we don't need anymore, so or potentially don't need anyone. Yeah, so there's we'll be. <laughs> so so now what do we need to do? That was a great philosophical conversation. Not, nothing except time. So the time is time time is ticking on those questions. So yeah. at the end of the January, you have to have those questions. Yeah about uh, obligating funds to projects. Yeah. The budget mm -hmm. itself, um, I'm gonna continue to work with Jen and the committees that have submitted, keep submitting information. Yep. The one thing I wanted to go over, which I was kind of stuck on, which is the last page, we had talked about, uh, I just need your input. So uh, the last page is a draft basically of the concept to break up outside agencies. So the, the last page of the town budget always had outside agencies. Yep. And you'd have a long list. Mm -hmm. Some of them are things that you would never take money away from, like Lamoille County Planning Commission. Yeah, we did last time we said that those, so we sort of sort of that and the economic development are- Yep, so I started sliding those in at the top yep. and you can okay. see what I'm calling, this is the question, local county agencies. In other words, those are groups that we work with day to day almost. Or we, or they give us grant money if we apply. So they're a conduit to like fund the part of our financial system is a good way to understand it. Or things that you would uh, have replace a town department. Uh, and I and the two I kind of put on here just for questions. HPS after school program is like a rec program mm -hmm. for the town. Sometimes this this one the schools get yep. support to do it. Uh, youth mentoring. That is a community uh, group, but I I was torn between putting that behind the general support. Anything under that general support breakdown is one subject to the town policy for petition to increase or change. There's two that don't that have zero in this year. So is that we aren't giving them money, or they didn't ask for money? No, this is the this is the temp. We're looking at the format of this form before I move the numbers around. Okay. Because we, we had a question about uh, your outside service agency policy. Okay. Used to require that whole last page of agencies to submit a petition to increase right. their yeah. dollar amount. That's still true. But some of the agencies that we do business with are really our grant partners okay. or memberships with the Loyal County Planning Commission where if they need money, it's usually based on the population charge at that time. It's not based on a going from 500 to 750 because they, you know, American Red Cross doesn't have enough money. So they want to ask for more money. They don't give us anything. We don't provide, they don't pay me financially. It's just a one-time check. Yep. So think of the one-time ch check folks as the general support where that money just goes to that agency. The ones up top, which I'm still trying to work on a title for that, the local county agencies are ones where we have a fiscal relationship or a membership fee, or they're based on population or they're a service where they actually provide a service that normally would be a town department or under recreation. So we're not really, you know what I mean? It's a, it's a slight difference, but it's an important difference because would you ask Lamoille Economic Development Corp to go, you know, they provide, they give us $15,000 for an economic study grant like seven years ago. Do we, do we want to argue over their request for another 50 bucks and have them do a petition and you know, so that's that's the evaluation I started doing. I some moved up, and other ones stayed below, subject to the policy. There's other things in here like Lamoille County 
court is, well, it, 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 is it, in the budget it, here somewhere and it, it's yeah. hanging out all by itself almost <laughs> it's like right. why is the loyal county court outside is a they're a county agency we have to pay that we're not not gonna not pay it that's the tax it, it's sort of i look at the top lifts are almost in in your in your two that's where the two school things are an odd place but the others are really sort of it's like we're members yeah it's like a membership fee you know, or, they, they or, assign you your membership fee every year. Yeah, based on the per capita yeah, cost. Yeah, what, whatever it the is. County they, is they, actual tax. There. Yeah, they, that's they, an actual tax. A, where these other things are just worthy causes that the community could do on, to give to. Could do on their own almost. Yeah, like without yeah. the. I mean, you could, you know, you could, you could ditch all of them if you wanted to, and 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 actually you don't because of what towns give to those collectively those are very yeah. important for all the grants that they yeah. apply yeah for. that's the match money a lot you know, yeah right. you know they, 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 they need. that's three thousand dollars yeah they got a big increase by petition yeah, by petition a couple of years ago yeah yeah and, and some of these do you know now, now the thing i don't understand with this meals on wheels is two thousand four hundred i thought meals on wheels was free for the People that got them, depending on their in, depending on their income, yeah. Really, that's what how it goes. Yeah, because I know some for a lot of people, it's people said they pay for it. Yeah, but, I think it's yeah. Like I pay for it. We pay for it for dad. And then you can there's that. certain days that you can just go, and just literally go on yourself. Yeah, like a, like a Wednesdays. Restaurant. I think they do Wednesdays. Right, is a nice dinner that you can go to in person. I, but you, it costs it costs you when you like do that. six dollars or something. Oh, yeah, right. I mean, and it is a don. It's considered a donation. You know, it's not like it's a fixed price. Yeah, there, where it is. Mm. Yep. Yeah, and you can get it to go. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So anyway, and th these reports on the the bottom half and the top half are usually in the town report, so yeah. th there won't be any difference on the reporting. It's just whether or not you want to highlight them to be not subject to that petition policy. That's why we're doing it because it got confusing with, well, they want ten dollars more because the population changed. Oh, go get a petition for that. You know, we don't. We, don't, we want to make it clear like that that's and you you don't you didn't move them all up. It makes sense. And it, and it doesn't change the voters' right mm -hmm. to highlight that as a deduct too. They can look at any line in the budget and deduct mm -hmm. it. It's really a policy applicability issue to break it out into that other agency general support category. So it's a small change, but it's a change. So I want to take some time on it. And if you guys don't want to change, we can go back to what it did last year. Maybe, I don't know. It just got confusing because we we don't ask certain people to go through the policy, but they are being combined in the others with the outside agencies. So. But I would look through the whole budget and try to pull the hanging uh budget lines that are groups that there's three or four of them I still haven't brought in here that are just in other parts of the budget okay. and bring those into that top part. Uh, and then Kim would know when people submit their annual request, which is a letter to the town, oh. or town administrator, um, which ones are subject to the policy. She'll go to that last page and find out the general support people are subject to the petition policy to, to increase. Oh. Doesn't home health and hospice do theirs on population base? Anybody with funny numbers like Central Vermont Adult and Home Health as a oh, home. home Health uh, Rural Transport did a big increase. I, I think they I think they try to do that. I don't know if they do it annually. I know VLCT or not VLC LCPC just changed their policy to it every year, so that's going to okay. be changing every year. It used to be static. I don't recall about the loyal home health if they. I think that no, I think that's why their numbers funky. Okay. If you see those funky numbers, they're trying. They've, yeah, got, a, right. they've got a formula, and then they just they don't round it up, which they would, but they don't. Yeah. So I and, and again that that is a the other way to look at those other groups are uh, service providers that don't have any direct relationship to the finances of a town. There's no relation, right. there's no back and forth. They don't provide staff to the town. They don't provide grants. They don't provide services to the town operations. They just get their check and provide their own services to the community out here. That's that's the difference. I rely, I rely, or you guys rely on a lot of those other ones. It's two school ones. Uh, that is in the recreation type 
uh, services, which could be brought down below. That the, I guess the both of those could be brought back right. below where they were before, uh, just for discussion. And we can make these changes right through January. It doesn't, doesn't matter to no, the right, process. Right. The dollars aren't just, changing. It's right. just how, just trying to how it looks. Okay. So keep thinking about that. That was it. That was it for the budget. Um, I will send out a new budget. I want to walk through the whole thing with Jen, same way I did with you tonight. And I'll make sure all the actuals are what she wants to present to the voters. That's, those are really her numbers. Yeah. F, actual 23. Um, and we'll carry on. So we'll deal with the warning, the draft warning in early January. I think we have three meetings in January to do the so, two regular ones and a special budget one towards the end. Okay. You've got two more. Yes. Not enough. Uh, Brent sent a email today saying that he thinks his last day in Texas will be January 18th. Ooh. Brent right. Sheets. The new town administrator. New town administrator is uh he thinks they're gonna want him to stay the whole 30 days. Right. Which is the 18th of January. If they discharge him earlier, he may come here earlier, which is fine with me for sure. But yes. he just he uh he, he couldn't commit to, until after his meeting tonight in Texas. Right. So that they'll let us know to confirm that. So a little bit of work for Jen on the full 24 budget and salaries and things. I really want to write that up for the board. I think that's a it's a good thing to do. Use some real numbers to see it. How we've been talking to phase it in. Yeah. And if anybody has a way to solve um, capital costs, this current budget includes no increase in capital reserves. So that I think that's in deference to maybe the series of ARPA transfers. Yeah. Yeah. So leave the budget is zero. Yeah. Maybe the voters add some through article. Like we did last year, transfer some so much to a reserve from the projected on a side fund balance. A little tricky this time of year because we don't have a good audit number, but of 23. Well, we'll figure out the best way to do that because we definitely well you don't have to ask for it all. You can, you know, Jen, I think Jennifer can come up with a really good conservative you absolutely will have this for fund balance on June 30, 24. I think she can do that. Part of that's gonna uh, part of that's gonna be on our capital projects, of course. Um, how much we do with that. Okay. So yeah, okay, we'll sign the warrants. Sign warrants. Approve them. Oh, and the preservation trust letter. Oh. I think you have to the letter of support. You add it to the agenda, but you haven't acted on it yet. Okay. That's copies for everybody else. Looks like you need a final one on letterhead. So this is really just the draft. Okay. Okay. Nice signature, Savannah. Jeez. You would probably have these really good. Impressive signatures. Okay, so I need a motion to uh, to approve the warrants. I'll make the motion. Second. But it'll be the three of us. I'll <laughs> take your signify by saying aye. 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 Did you get a chance to see him, Chas? Yes, yep, so I can vote aye. Okay. <laughs> um okay. I need uh, the uh I need approval. You see you got the the uh, Gihon Valley call committee is applying for another grant. And I need a letter of support from us. So I need authority to sign the letter. So move. Second. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody aye. opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Um uh, 
Uh, let me see. Oh, how about the uh, motion to approve the uh, minutes from the 12 12 commit? Meeting? I'll make that motion. <laughs> Second. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. What else do we need to do? Okay. What's number eight? So. Uh, special select board meeting. That's well, we'll end up with probably needing to have. I can't believe January is almost here. <laughs> um, it's a good budget comment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, Holidays sum, and... sum, sums up the budget. Yeah. Okay. So let me see. So our regular select board meetings in January would be. Uh, ninth, and then the twenty third. Yeah, ninth and the twenty third. In the ninth, right? Yeah, in the ninth. Um, the twenty third. Probably won't be here for the twenty third. Ooh, you'll be someplace fun. Warmer. I was gonna say probably, hopefully warmer. <laughs> for for how long? Well, that's the end of the discussion. I see. <laughs> You're overdue to make it permanent. <laughs> you are. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do you know when you're going yet, Rolly? You're right around the 19th, or the 22nd. But I can still take my, I still got my. Yeah, I can, yeah, you can, you can zoom in because I'm just looking. So, Ron, would it make sense if we do the ninth and the twenty third? Maybe wait till the ninth, but then maybe do the thirtieth. That's what's in the minutes. Yeah. Okay. The thirtieth works. The thirtieth works. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So put another one on the thirtieth. And hopefully that will be it. I, with the budget cycle and the town report, I'll do right about then. Right. Um, everything approved and sort of fine. Yeah, you'll have town, you know, you'll have your select board report to review, you'll have the budget to review and approve, you have the warning to review and approve, all that stuff on the 30th. But um I haven't gotten the printer schedule yet from Repo Graphics, but they usually want stuff by the 5th of February in order to meet your okay. mailing mailing deadlines. Yeah. Let me email this to you. You can reconvert it. Okay. We can keep going. I just turned off myself. Okay. Well, they. <laughs> I just turned off okay, for a minute. Right, just they have. But they're substantially done for you, but. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. Um. Anything else that we need to talk about? We got those. We got that. Uh, Centerville and Brooke was on, I think. Oh, yeah. Is that right? Uh, the center, well, last meeting we voted to hold back the money. And that was done in our warrant, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Do we, do we need to do anything else? They aren't going to do anything this Smart, No, I don't think if you, you didn't approve the final. Invoice is that way? Same thing. I think you just said that right there. What? Well, right. I'm just trying to go backwards first. Right. But you you didn't withhold anything by a deduct. You just didn't pay the final invoice. Is that right? You did a ten percent retainage. Is that what you're talking about? That's part of the contract. Yeah. That was part part of the contract. Right. So there's really nothing happening at that point because he's been writing his invoices with ten percent retainage. So. Right. Sorry. I'm just wondering if there's not something else. To no, 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 no. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. So that that's actually just a restatement of what's in the contract, right? Right. So you you don't have to release any of that ten percent 
which is about seventy six thousand dollars into y'all are happy. That's how that works. So that that was on the agenda. What's happened since? This is just evolving, right? So now we had a payment to them in the orders tonight, yeah. which retained the seventy six thousand. So that 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 money's going to go. So he, he's actually getting a big check. The next question I had for FEMA. So our our performance period was extended a couple times for this project, uh, Brook Road and Centerville Road. The last extension we got said, you shall complete the work by December 31st, 23. Right. We are, by that invoice that we were just talking about, 100% done, except that the engineer, Watershed and Mark, went to the uh, site and developed two, two parts, the paving issue at Centerville and a punch list of miscellaneous items, which is common, which a lot of contractors will come back for. Some of them just blow it off because they're clean up the dirt pile on Mrs. Smith's property in the spring, you know, remove all the stakes from the wetland area. Okay, yeah. So that kind of a punch list, which are, are really just the contractor remembering in the spring to go out and do that stuff. The paving is a bigger issue. so. Mark said to um, Mark and Watershed agreed that there would be a cost estimate to smooth out that dip basically for next year. And the value of that, Mark thinks, is twelve to thirteen thousand dollars. Put a couple of cuts in the pavement and then bring it straight across instead of a drop. The board has to make a decision to pay. De Roche by 60 days after the end of the performance period. So by March 1st, you would want to close out all your invoices to the contractor. So the performance period is met. We don't have to ask for another extension, which is the project complete by December 31st. FEMA expects all invoices to be paid within the 60 days following. So we have to resolve this $13,000, $12,000 whatever the number ends up being issue. In that time. For the paving. For the paving. And and we'll add in the punch list item so we can cut DeRoche loose this winter and not expect him to come back for the little punch list. We'll just deal with those things, which are all doable by highway. So we have to come up with a number and deduct that from the 76,000 and pay him the difference. The difference, okay. So. Which is fair. Which is, yeah. no, probably the approach would be to, to get Mark French and Watershed to actually produce a memo document explaining the parts and pieces and right. the dollar. Right. And then the board has to decide to probably approach Ron DeRoche and say, hey, this is what we're thinking based on staff, the engineer report and Mark French. Let's see what his reaction is, whether he would fight under contract terms um, as unreasonable. That's mm -hmm. I'm just I'm just, that's his opportunity though, right? Yeah, so he exactly. could either say, "Great, you guys did a really good job. I really appreciate doing that estimate. I totally agree. We shouldn't be putting you know dips in roads where there's no dip before. <laughs> and thank you for fixing it. And we'll agree to your deduct. Yeah, right. That, that's how you'd right. want it to go. Well, hey, hey, don't take a rocket sign to see it. <laughs> so anyway, that's, that's coming up. I just want to give you that. That's, that's the update of what's coming up. It's mostly on the down side. So he's paid except for 10%, and we could probably pay him eight, seven, or seven and a half percent or eight and a half percent, something like that. And, keep, and the rest would stay with you guys as, right. okay. for spring work. To close that project out, get rid of, this is the other part of it. Once you do that and all the expenses are paid, we submit to FEMA to get FEMA the, the, the 92% back, which general like, because that will hit 24, which helps right. our cash flow. Right. So we we, right. we don't want to spend a lot of time debating with Ron just from a cash flow perspective. So hopefully he's agreeable and however that happens, it happens. But yeah. that's where I, that's it for that. Have you seen that chat? You know what that is? Yeah, yep. That was just a couple of comments during the meeting. Okay, that's all I had. I just want to make sure you're up to speed. Okay, we're well, good on that. We're there. We're good. Anything else? We're good. Chas, got anything? Nope. Nope. Okay, we're good. That's a lot.
I, I guess that's a wrap, right? Motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Okay. okay. Well, check it out. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. aye.